Aga.io, probably heard of it, never made it. In this video, we'll get down the movement, graphics, and code, and then in part 2, I'll show you how to do some super easy free multiplayer that I've actually used in a game called Pain's Warfare, which is out on Steam right now. Okay, awesome. So once we're in, I've actually prepared a few sprites and free assets for us to use. So the link for this is in the description. Um, let me just download it. And you can just drag this into your project. Click import. There we go. And what this comes with is a little prefab. So drag it into our scene. And now we have a very nice grid. Now this may look a bit funky, uh, just in the play mode. But when we actually start using this, this will look normal. It's just the pixels uh, scaling, weirdly. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's all good. Go to the sprites folder and drag in our player. Let's set the position to 0, 0. And we can just make him a nice red. Now, we currently can't see him, and that's because the order is the same as the tile map. So we can just bring this up. There we go. And this should be pretty good. I'll just also center our grid. There we go. Okay, so let's make our little player move around a bit. So I'll click add component and I'll call it movement. Okay, so let's delete this start method and we'll add a public camera called cam. And then in here, in your update method, let's create a new Vector2 called input, and we'll set this equal to input the mouse position. Now we'll make a new vector3 called world input, and we'll set this equal to cam the screen to world point input. Oh, input. There we go. Okay, so what we've got so far is we've gotten the mouse position in this world space. Now let's add some player movement. So we'll do transform dot position equals vector three dot move towards. We'll pass in our transform dot position, our world input in our max distance delta. We'll make a new variable for our speed. So public float speed equals one. We'll just reference that here. And we'll multiply it by our time dot delta time. I'll add a semicolon here. There we go. Now in our inspector, we can reference our camera. And if we play this, we should be able to move. And as you can see, when we play this, we're able to move. Awesome, so how do we make our camera move with our player? Now, the most obvious solution would be just to parent our camera to the circle. But we can actually do better, so let's make a smooth camera follow script. On our camera, click Add Component, and we'll call this script Smooth Camera Follow. Up here, we'll add a public transform for our target, and then a public float for our speed. We can delete this. And in this update method, we'll make a new vector3 called Position Love. And we'll set this equal to vector3 dot love. And we'll pass in our transform dot position. Target the position. And then time dot delta time times our speed. Then we'll set position love dot z to be equal to transform.position.z just because we don't want to move our camera in the z direction and then we'll set transform.position 
to be equal to position lab. There we go. We can set our speed to 3 and drag in our circle. Let's play. Let's actually increase the speed. There we go. And this looks pretty awesome so far. Now a slight issue is that our player has vanished. And if you might notice, our player Z position is actually in the negatives. So let's fix that. Make a new vector 3 called new position. And we'll set it equal to this right here. And then we'll set new position dot Z to be equal to transform dot position dot Z. Then we can set our transform dot position equal to new position. And let's actually change our speed back to four. There we go. And now this is working flawlessly. Let's actually add some collectibles that we can collect across the map and grow our little player. So in the sprites folder, let's drag in this circle and I'll just make it green for the time being. Change this order to one and let's just scale this down to about 0 0.3 like so. And we'll call it food. Now in our player circle, let's actually rename it to player. Let's add a new script called size manager. Create an add. So we can delete the start method and we'll add a private float called current scale. And we'll set this equal to one. Okay, so we'll add a new function to be called by Unity called void on trigger enter 2D with a collider 2D of other. We'll set our current scale to be plus equals by one. And then we'll set transform the local scale to be equal to a new vector three of our current scale for the x, current scale for the y, and 1 for the z. Okay, so now there are a few components that we need on both our player and the food. So let's add those now. On our player, let's add a circle collider 2D and also a rigid body 2D. On our rigid body, make sure to set the gravity scale to 0. And then on our food, let's add a circle collider 2D. And let's check is trigger right here. There we go. And now if we play this. Awesome. Now you might notice that the food isn't actually getting destroyed. And also that the scaling is quite rough. So let's fix that. So in this on trigger enter 2D function, let's type destroy other dot game object. And then in here, we'll add a new method called void object, which is called by unity. And we'll set transform dot local scale to be equal to vector three dot lerp, transform dot local scale, and then our new vector three over here, and then time dot delta time times, and we'll add a new public float here. So public float scale speed, and we'll set this equal to five. And then in here we'll pass in our scale speed. Okay. So as you can see now, we just ate the food and now our player is a little bigger.
So now what we need is spawning this food around the map and also potentially making a random color for each of these food particles. So let's do that. First, let's make a prefab from our food and we can delete it from the scene. Then right click, create an empty game object and we'll call this game manager. Add a component called game manager. And in here, we'll add a public game object called food prefab. And we'll also add a public game manager called instance. And then also a public vector2 for our x range and a public vector2 for our y range. There we go. Then we'll add a new private void called spawn food. And we'll set our new vector3 called spawn position equal to new vector3. For the x, we'll do random dot range. For our minimum, we'll do x range dot x. And for our max, we'll do x range dot y. Add a comma here. For our y, we'll do, we'll pass in our y range dot x and our y range dot y. And then for our z, we'll just do one. And then we'll do game object food equals instantiate food prefab at our spawn position. And then with quaternion dot identity, which is just the default rotation. Okay. Let's delete this update method right here. And in our start method, we can do four. And then for our upper, we'll do, let's say 50. So we'll do this 50 times. And we'll spawn food in here. Okay. And then we'll add a new method called void awake, which is called before the start method. And we'll say instance equal to this. Now this will come in very handy later and I'll show you what it does in a sec. So bear with me. Now you might be wondering why did we do our X range as a vector two? So I'll show you. So the reason we did it as a vector two is just because it's intuitive in the inspector. So our minimum can be negative 10 and our maximum X position can be 10. So negative 10 this way, 10 this way. For our y, we'll do a minimum of negative 10 and then a maximum of 10. So we'll have like this box area available for spawning food. Oh, my bad. Uh, this needs to be static. Okay, save that. Uh, for our food prefab, let's drag this in. And now we can test this to see if it worked. Okay. So as you can see, we've now spawned food randomly in our map. <laughs> okay. Uh, fantastic. So eventually we will want to also make the camera pan out as we eat more food. We'll do that in a second, but first let's actually finish this food spawning script. So we'll do food dot get component and we'll get the sprite renderer. So we'll do get component sprite renderer dot color and we'll set this equal to and we want to set this to a random color. So we'll do random dot color hsv and this takes a number of parameters. So for our hue, we'll do from zero to one. For our saturation, we'll do from 0 0.9 to 1. And then for our value, which is like our brightness, we'll do from 0 0.9 to 1 as well. Okay. Now let's also make it so that when we eat the food with our player, we spawn a new food particle in its place. So let's make this public 
save that. And in this size manager, we'll do game manager dot instance dot spawn food. Save that. Okay. And this looks pretty good, except for some of the obvious issues. So let's firstly make it so we don't actually scale up that much when we eat food. So in the real Agario, I believe the way it works is that it scales out by like 1%, or like a percent value. So let's do that. Okay, so instead of doing plus equals 1, we'll do times equals, and we'll pass in 1.0. Five. So it'll increase by 5% in size. And this plays pretty well, but we still want to actually make the camera pan out a bit. So let's do that. So to pan out, we need to change this size value and increase it as our player grows. So in the smooth camera follow script, we'll add a new public camera called cam. So in our update method we'll go cam the orthographic size to be equal to five times target the local scale dot x. Okay, let's save. Okay, so let's select our camera here and we need to drag in our camera component. Alright, let's test. And as you can see, we zoom out very slightly. So right now, the player is always a constant size on the camera screen, but we might not actually want that. Uh, what if we want the camera to sort of lag behind a bit with the player? So let's actually add that. We'll set our camera, the orthographic size, to be equal to, uh, let's copy this, math.lub, and for the first value we'll pass in cam.orthographic size, for the second we'll pass in this value we had before, and for the third we'll just pass in our speed times time dot delta time. Let's actually separate the movement and scale speed. So I'll duplicate this and we'll make a new speed value for scale speed. Okay. Let's set the scale speed to about three as well. And if we play this, Now this is super smooth. Alrighty, so we'll add multiplayer to this in the next video, as well as some other polish improvements. So I'll see you then, bye.